While I was waiting for parts to come in, I reinstalled the valve cover temporarily with just a few bolts, so I had to remove it again. Dummy plug was already out, so I just had to re remove the standpipe. The lower half of the standpipe didn't come out, and there's nothing updated in the lower half. Um, I decided it wasn't worth trying to dig it out and tearing more stuff up to put in something that was probably the same thing as what was going to come out. So going by what people say and that the standpipes almost never fail and the updated part was in the upper half, I just left the lower half. I finally got to put in the new dummy plug on the side that was actually broken so for the first time ever in this project we're actually replacing something that was actually broken. So put the new dummy plug in. And once again, temporarily reinstall the valve cover since it's a windy day and I'm having to work outside. I'll be putting the valve cover on for good here after I finish the other side. I want to pressure check it after I get the new parts in. The kit comes with dummy plugs and standpipes for both sides of the engine. So even though this side was not leaking, I chose to go ahead and replace them because I don't really want to have to do this again anytime soon. good at least not all ate up like the other side was just a matter of time till they would fail Just the top again. Yeah. Oh, rings are good on this still too. new dummy plug has these reinforcement deals on it.
I attached the leak finder tool that we made and I showed earlier so that I could uh, pressure check it now that the new dummy plugs and standpipes have been installed in both sides. So before I put it all back together, I just wanted to check for leaks. I don't hear any hissing. The IPR is not commanded close, so it's going to be venting some pressure, but it's not leaking. It's not hissing. If those O-rings were leaking, we'd hear them. I'm running with that assumption. Alright. I'm satisfied over here. With the valve cover off, we can access what would be the ICP sensor port if this rail was installed on the other side. So I pulled the plug out and inserted the tool into this driver's side and fed air to it so I could listen for leaks on this side of the engine. didn't hear any leaking so I decided to go ahead and remove the tool put the plug back in and put the valve covers on for good this time all right replacing the o-rings and the uh, screen on the IPR valve the new ones that are included in the kit and reinstall the IPR valve tighten it up reattach the connector then I I blew out the bolt holes for the turbo pedestal and installed the bolts The magnet is useful for the ones that you can't get your big fat fingers in if you have big hands like mine. Then I slipped over the other side, went ahead and put the uh, glow plug relay back on and the bracket. Now these valve covers, pretty easy to figure out where things go when you look at the brackets and the uh, little uh, deals on the wire loom that go on the studs. You can figure out where the studs go and where the bolts go. Uh, when remounting the glow plug relay, I tried all kinds of fancy tools, extensions, wobblies, and found that the best tool to tighten that bolt was just a regular old short 10 millimeter wrench. Wrestling with the turbo was a, an adventure, shall we say. I had to put this bungee on it to hold it up because I'd knocked the drain tube out of the cover for the pump. And uh, almost took my eye out with that taking the bungee cord off. So if you're going to use that method, be careful. Finally got it to drop in, got all the bolts in. Now I could reattach the heat shield, reinstall the Fickham. That's the Fickham bracket right there. I didn't want to put that on because I didn't want it poking me while I worked on the other things. So, 
three connectors back under the ficum. Put the rear bracket on. Went ahead and reinstalled the uh, oil filler tube. The crankcase vent on the uh, driver's side of the engine. A little assembly lube on the seal before I pushed it back into the uh, valve cover there. Oiled the bolts down real good before I got started taking the regulator apart because I saw videos where guys had broken those bolts. Didn't want that to be me. You have to hold in on that because there's a spring behind there, of course. That's what you're going to replace is that spring in the kit. And the kit includes parts for older vehicles. Mine's a 2006, so I didn't need that rubber part that goes in the uh, in the body there. But, uh, I put the new seal on it and I attached the fitting loosely. When I, I tighten that fitting up that goes on the regulator cover there, tighten that fitting up after it was reattached to the engine. Pretty simple operation, but you want to make sure that your parts don't fall out while you're uh, putting things together. Yeah, there, I'm tightening the fitting. I put that uh, zip tie on that line there so that that fitting wouldn't fall down where I couldn't get a hold of it. It's an old trick I've seen. Well, WD-40 on that tube there helps it go on. And I used a 25-inch Craftsman pry bar to push that into place. Well, thank you all for watching my movie here. A uh, couple little details just to throw in at the end here. I uh, had to tighten that clamp right there. That's for the exhaust. I reinstalled the uh, map sensor bracket, which is right here. And uh, let's see here. The charge air cooler tube. The clamp with the turbo. And down at the bottom right down here okay then going to the other side of the truck on the driver's side I had to reinstall the uh, air filter I didn't show that in the movie there's a, a bracket there a couple of bolts for the heat shield some clamps Reattach the mass air sensor connector and the one for the filter minder, which is right there. Um, so, I also had to reinstall the degas bottle and put the new cap from the kit on there. So, I'm sorry for the quality of the video. I did the best I could while I was trying to build a truck here. I hope it helped somebody. Thanks for watching. Alright, well, it's been a few days since I've got her up and running. I've driven her to work a few times. Shows you how much better and how much nicer she starts here.
doesn't crank for 15, 20 seconds before it starts anymore. 